Folks, if you use iMovie to make your videos and you're not sure if you should use iMovie, the Mac Photos app, or the Finder to organize your media files, then this video is for you. We'll look at all three of these alternatives in terms of how well they organize your media, whether or not you can edit them, whether they handle audio files, how well they use their storage, and how easy they integrate with iMovie. Let's start with using iMovie because that's the easiest one to understand. First thing you'll want to do is to go into the Mac Photos app and disable the auto import from your device. Step number two, plug in your device, in this case an iPhone. Go ahead and import your files. In this case we're bringing in both a video and a picture, a still picture, from the iPhone. Go ahead and select your media, then press import selected, and then you will see them pop up in the event that was selected. After that, a pop-up will come up saying that uh, you can eject your iPhone and go ahead and do that. Now let's look at how to import a file from a camera SD card into iMovie. I find the easiest way to do this is with the Finder. So use the Finder, go ahead, find the file, and just drag it into the iMovie event. Now let's take a look at how to do this with the Zoom H1 audio recorder. Once again, the Finder is the easiest way to do this. The H1 shows up as an external drive, you go ahead and select it, select your audio file, and just drag it into the same event. Now let's look at how versatile iMovie is in organizing your media. The events that appear under the iMovie library only have a single level of hierarchy. That means you can't have folders of events. The good news is iMovie has tools to edit all of your different types of media, your video, your photos, and your audio files iMovie is fully capable of storing your audio files and has a very nice pictorial representation of the waveform. It also shows you what parts of the waveform have been used. One nice thing about using iMovie to store your media is you'll have only one copy of it and that's in your iMovie library. Last but not least, the ease of import into iMovie is really a, a non-issue because you're working with things directly in iMovie. Now let's look at using the Mac Photos app, formerly known as iPhoto, to manage your media. First let's look at how we browse. Under Libraries, the Photos Library will bring up your uh, Photos uh, albums and you can browse those just as if you were in the Photos app, although it's quite a bit smaller display. And you can even select a subset, all or just the video or just the photos or the favorites. Once you've found the media you're interested in, you can just click on it and drag it right into the timeline. It does not need to go into an event. It can go directly onto the timeline. You'll find quite quickly that iMovie is a bit clumsy for browsing your iPhoto library. So what I like to do is when I think I've got something I'm interested in, I can right click on it and then it'll say reveal in photos. And from there you can bring up the photos app and then the photo that you had selected will be Display, display directly and you can browse through other sections of that same album. Uh, from there you can uh, click on favorites uh, within the photos app. Uh, I like to use this to select the ones that I'm interested in using and then I can go back into iMovie. Now there is a little bit of a trick here. You have to move to another folder, folder and then back to the photos library for it to refresh the favorites and then when you select the favorites you'll get just the uh, media that you're interested in that you can drag. So now let's look at the pros and cons of using the Mac Photos app. Uh, first of all, you've got all the organizational capabilities of the, uh, of the Photos app to organize things into folders, move things around manually, reorder them. Uh, it's really a very powerful way of organizing all of your visual media. One of the clear advantages of using the Photos app to organize your media is you have the full image editing capability built in for stills. So one of the major drawbacks of using the Photo apps to organize your media is it does not handle audio files in any way, shape, or form. One of the clear disadvantages of using the Photos app is you'll end up with two copies of all the media that you put into your videos. You can see on my hard drive I have 32 gigs in my iMovie library and that is probably completely redundant with the 80 gigs in my photos library. Next let's look at using the finder or the file system for storing our media. Use the image capture app located in their mission control and the others folder to import your media uh, from your camera. Make sure you're importing to the folder that you wish. You can bring up a finder folder by selecting other in the import to 
and then you can navigate anywhere you wish to within your file system to do your imports. Then either select the media that you're interested in to import or simply select import all to bring everything uh, in from your camera. So if we then go back to the finder and uh, bring up the, the folder of interest there, in this case under documents, uh, video productions, and then uh, video tips, you can see that it has indeed uh, imported the images from uh, the iPhone. One of the advantages of using the file system is you have the full power of the finder and the file system to organize all of your media. If you're using the file system to organize your media, you will need another app to do your media editing. In this case, probably iMovie. Audio files, of course, can be stored in the file system. Uh, you just drag them into the file system rather than into uh, My Movie directly. You can end up with two uh, copies of your media. However, you can make very efficient use of external drives to store your media if you use the file system. The file system is actually easier to use than the Photos app to drag and drop directly onto the timeline. In this example, we'll drag a movie directly from the Finder directly onto the timeline without going through the intermediary of an event. In summary, I've used all three of these and I find that using iMovie is great for simple projects where the media is for videos only, Mac Photos is great for complex projects or when you're using your media elsewhere like Facebook, and the file system is great when you have an extremely complex project where total media control is required. I can see sunrise sneaking above the camera.